Another important use of uh, induced current is the use of transformers to jump up and jump down the uh, voltage of electric wires. So uh, one of the challenges with producing and transmitting electricity is the loss of uh, energy due to heat. So when we uh, transmit power uh, via electricity, we remember that the power is equal to the current times the uh, voltage. Uh, so the thing is, the energy lost to heat is due to having a high current. Remember, uh, in the wire, we have our uh, electrons sort of stumbling around and uh, bouncing off of the atoms in the wire. And the larger the current, uh, the more collisions that occur and the more energy is lost to heat. So to maintain the power, we want to reduce the current to be as low as possible. And we want to the voltage to be as high as possible. That's when we are tra transmitting the power a long distance uh, from our power plant to our metro area. However, uh, once it ends up there, you want to be able to reduce the voltage because if you have a really high voltage going through your wires, you have to be very careful about tree limbs and anything else touching the wires. So uh, you want to be able to jump uh, up and jump down the voltage of a wire. So we want our uh, 120 volts in our house, but we also want the uh, hundreds of thousands of volts when we, when we uh, transmit it across the state. To do that, we use something called a transformer. Transformer is uh, pretty similar to the original device that Faraday built uh, back when he was proving that changing magnetic fields produce electric currents. So we have a primary coil that is looped around a piece of iron, and then it is uh, supplied with an alternating current. An alternating current is a current that, uh, rather than being constant, it follows a, a sine wave. So the voltage is always oscillating back and forth. So this primary co coil is uh, producing a magnetic field, but also because the uh, current is constantly changing, it's producing a changing magnetic field. This changing magnetic field then induces a current in the secondary coil. So the way in which we are generating the changing magnetic field in the secondary coil is to induce the current to be constantly changing uh, the current in the primary coil. Okay, so we have uh, induced a voltage in the secondary coil, but how much voltage have we induced? So the uh, ratio of the voltages on our two coils is uh, proportional to the number of loops in the two coils. So you want to step up the voltage, uh, you want your secondary coil to have many more loops than the primary coil, so the voltage comes out of the transformer, it would be uh, greater than the voltage going in. So if our primary coil had 10 loops and the secondary coil had 20 loops, the uh, primary voltage is 100 volts, then the voltage across the secondary coil would then be 200 volts. You would uh, multiply the ratio of the secondary loop to the primary loop by the primary voltage to get the uh, secondary voltage. We also know that the uh, energy needs to be conserved. That means that uh, the uh, IV, uh, so the uh, power, uh, must be equal to the power out. So that means IV in must be equal to the IV out. So that means the uh, voltage uh, of the secondary coil divided by the voltage of the primary coil is equal to the current of the primary coil divided by the current through the secondary coil. So whichever coil has the higher voltage will have the lower uh, current and vice versa. Right. This should make a lot of sense because the idea here is to uh, crank up the voltage so we can then uh, reduce the current and uh, conserve energy. Okay, so let's do our example. So well, we have a transformer that has uh, 400 uh, primary and 40 secondary turns. If an alternating current of 200 volts is applied to the primary, uh, what potential is produced across the secondary uh, coil? So we know that the uh, voltage of the secondary divided by the voltage of the primary is equal to the number of loops around the secondary divided by the loops around the primary coil. We want to know the secondary voltage so we can multiply uh, both sides by the uh, voltage primary and isolate the secondary voltage. Now we can solve for the secondary voltage, which is the uh, number of secondary turns uh, divided by the number of primary turns times the primary voltage. So we plug that in, we get to 40 turns over 400 turns uh, times 240 uh, volts gives us 24 volts for our secondary coil. So the secondo secondary coil has uh, one-tenth the turns that the primary coil has, so it has one-tenth the uh, voltage. Okay, so that one uh, shouldn't give you too much trouble. You have a question to answer on this, and I guess this class, a uh, little bit of a breather after kind of the heavy lifting of Lenz's Law. Uh, so this also ends our unit on induced current, and so uh, next week we're going to uh, start looking at electromagnetic radiation. All right, good luck and take care of yourselves.